Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMetVince.com and this video today is going to be a little bit different than my normal videos because this video is going to be about basic fault finding and using simple tools to try and fix problems. So I thought what should I do to fix? So what I've done is I've scrolled through eBay and I've picked out an interesting listing which has basically some weird and wonderful consoles and also controllers as well that are all faulty. So these are all sold as faulty and I'm just going to work through them one by one and hopefully we will be able to fix one or more of them. Now the price I pay for everything here is only £63 so even if I for example just get you know one or two of the consoles working then I've made my money back depending on which ones are going to be fixed or not. Now am I confident I'm going to fix them? Well do you know what? I'm not a professional at this at all, but yet because I just use common sense, I often can fix many things. So I am pretty confident I am going to be able to fix some things in this box here using tools that you can all buy for not a lot of money. So basically I'm using a long screwdriver set here. You can see just long shafts on them. I'm also using a little precision screwdriver set. So that's one with loads of little tiny bits on there and a very simple cheap soldering iron. This is just one of the cheapest you can get. This is only about six or seven UK pounds. Problem is the, the point is quite big, so it's hard to do anything precision on it, but yeah, I'm hoping that you know it might come in handy. And the most important thing of all is just a very simple multimeter. Get one with continuity on it. So for example, when you touch the wires together, it makes a noise. So then, for example, you can trace things by just pressing one end there and then going around and touching it, and then you know you've got continuity between them. So it's easy, easy to use these, and it's, it comes in so handy for so many different projects. And then also uh, a DC voltmeter on that as well. So now with this video here, although I'm going to be working on games consoles and controllers. The same thing applies to anything, whether you're trying to fix your car or your washing machine, your cooker, whatever it is that's faulty, by using simple fault finding techniques, which is just common sense. It's basically, for example, you know, something's not working. So is power getting to that thing? Is the fuse okay in the plug? Is the power that you're plugging it into okay? Is there any power coming through that adapter if it's converting it to DC voltage? And then you see you can start working through where you know power's getting to there and then you move on to the next step. So by watching this video, hopefully you will pick up some skills and I think it's so important just to have some basic fault finding skills in your life. Now I am not a professional whatsoever, but since I was so big, since I was like eight or nine, I've been taking things apart just to see how they work. And you often find that it can sometimes be very simple things and sometimes people are too scared to take things apart because they say, oh, it's too technical or I haven't got the tools. But if you just go out, all these tools here would probably cost you about £40 for all of this here. And then you see you've got those tools and if you look after them, normally they'll last you most of your life. And then you can fix so many things. And as you see in this video, Hopefully, even if I just get one or two things fixed in here, I will have made back the price off the box of goodies itself. So basically, I paid £63 for everything in here. That was £60 for postage and £3 for delivery. And you can see there, that's one of the pictures. Let's just scroll down. This is one that I'm looking forward to. It's uh, this Retron 5, which is basically, it allows you to play NES, SNES, the Mega Drive games, so Genesis games, and also the Game Boy games like Game Boy Advance, Color, etc. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, it's supposed to have seven faulty consoles and five controllers. I think a Bit Boy, it mentioned a Bit Boy was in here as well. There we go. Two retro bit generations, one RDP portable SNES, one 8 bit NES, one Bit Boy handheld console, two Atari joysticks, and three NES controllers. So hopefully, we might be able to get some of them working. So let's open up the box and see what's what. Right, let's have a look inside. All right, well, everything is boxed. Okay, so this is the handheld portable. That plays the SNES and NES games. God, that looks nice. All right, well, everything does look in good good condition. Let's just take everything out first and then we can have a closer look at things. That's that one. We've got one of these retro bit generations. Got another one of them. Got a little Atari joystick there, or a clone off it. Another one. 
Got a bit boy. Looks like we've got three of these. NES controllers are again copies of them. And this one here, the Retron 5. Right, so uh, let's start and just go through them one by one. I'll do the controllers at the end because they're going to be kind of boring. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Sometimes people return things to stores because they don't like them and they pretend things are faulty when they're not really faulty. Or it can be very minor things. For example, if they come with a HDMI cable, it could be that the HDMI cable's faulty. And then they send the whole lot back, understandably, because when you get something, you expect it all to work. But for me, it's going to be a very easy fix if it was something as simple as a HDMI cable or a USB cable or something like that. Right, OK, let's get started. OK, let's start with this little bit boy, which is a handheld gaming device. So it's nice that it comes in its own box. Now, when you're buying from eBay, you have to be very careful. If, for example, you wanted a PlayStation Vita and you were looking to buy a spares or repair because you want to get it on the cheap, then buy one from what looks like a genuine seller. You know, just maybe somebody that, you know, has got one or two other listings and they're completely irrelevant to the PlayStation Vita. If you're going to buy one from somebody that deals in PlayStation Vitas, and obviously it has been tested. If they've got numerous other PlayStation Vitas, Vitas for sale, then of course they've tested it. It doesn't matter whether they say we haven't got the leads or sold as seen untested. You know full well that's been taken apart, the good bits have been taken out, or they see that it's uneconomical to repair and they're just passing it on. So try to buy from people that look like they're genuine. You can never be 100% sure, but don't buy from somebody that deals in the Vitas because of course they're going to have more knowledge of it than you and then they're going to have really taken it apart to see what's wrong with it. And if it's uneconomical for them to repair, well, is that not going to be exactly the same as you as well? Right, OK, so this uh, is a little micro USB. It looks like we've got AV out on this. Right, let's, uh, let's turn it on. Now, I will say all these things I've bought here, it appears to be working. I haven't got any knowledge of any of these things before. All right, so it looks like there's 300 games here. It all seems to be, all seems to be perfect. Okay, so it's got a rechargeable battery. Volume is working. Let's just go to a game. Double Dragon. Actually, quite a nice screen on this. Extremely lightweight. It feels very plasticky. It doesn't feel top quality, but uh, ooh, the buttons actually kind of feel okay, actually. Yeah, and they're working. That's working, that's working. Reset's working. Start's working. Select's working. So it looks like absolutely everything's working on this. Ah, there you go, look. Can you see? It's loose. Look at that. Yeah, there we go. So that's the fault. Right, let's get out of that. Let's turn that off. Okay, so that is the fault there. It's just a loose charging jack. Right, let's take this thing apart and then see if we can fix that. See if it's going to be an easy fix or not. It's very loose. Right, so if we have a look back here, you can just see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six screws. So hopefully when we undo them, it will all come apart quite nicely. Now I'm just going to pop the battery out just so we don't have any problems with it. Right, there you go, you can see it's just fallen out. So the charging jack's just popped out now when I uh, undid the cover. Right, so 100% that is the fault on it. So let's get the soldering iron out and let's see if we can solder that back on. Okay, so that's where it should sit, just like that. 
Right, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to solder that corner there and that corner there and then I'm going to take the circuit board out and put a blob there and a blob there to try and keep it in place. My soldering iron is not going to be good enough to solder each individual pin but I'm not 100% sure that they were soldered in the first place. I'm thinking that it might be just like a... that they were just resting on there to make the contact because it looks like the solder is just on the edges there. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so I'm just going to try and put a little blob of solder here and here just to keep it in place. Then I'm going to try to solder on the other side. Now, this is going to be hard because A, I'm not very good at soldering, and secondly, this soldering iron is quite big for doing fine jobs like this. Just using the screwdriver there just to put a bit of pressure on the back of it. I'm just resting it on there. Right, that's just gripped it there, so now I'm just going to put a little bit of solder here and here, the other end here. So just here, and just here. Let's just check that out. Okay, so just to have a closer look, you can see just a dot of solder there, dot of solder there, and then in the corner there and there, and I'm hoping now the pins will make a contact. Feels pretty secure. So let's put it back together. Alright, so just plug the micro USB in. And now I'm just going to put it to DC voltage and I'm just going to go across these pins here. And then it doesn't matter if the battery's fully charged or not, this will give us a reading whether there's voltage across these pins. There you go. That was three point, let me put it this way around, that was three point nine. Yeah, 3.90. Right, okay. And if you look at the battery, it should be less than that. There you go, 3.7 volt. Right, okay, so that's it. I'm just going to put it back together, put a tiny bit of tape on there just to keep it secure, and then that's that one fixed. Right, so that's all I'm doing, just a little bit of double-sided tape, the foam tape. I'm just going to keep the cover on it there, though, so it doesn't stick to everything in case I need to take it apart again. Right, we just have to do the screws up and then one final test and we'll get it working on the TV as well. And now when we get the cable and we plug it into the bottom you will see that the light will go to a blue so you know now that it's charging up. If we turn it on, you will see it's green but then when we plug it in it will go to blue. So you can see now it's charging up. I'm going to be very gentle when I do that because that's going to be a weak spot and the problem is is when you wiggle it in and out you just need to make sure that you put it in nice and straight and pull it out straight as well. It's the wiggling left and right that's going to cause it. Right, let's connect up to the TV. So that is that one there. Quite happy with that. That was a nice easy fix. Just a little bit of solder on the connector and now it all appears to be working just fine. Right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so here we have the Retron 5. Again, it's nice to have the box with it. So we've got the controller there, I've just seen that that was flashing a second ago. It's got power in it. This is the console itself. Let's get 
get all the bits out. Right, this is a UK, so I'm going to be using the UK one. These are just all different connectors for different parts of the world. and test it out. Right, it doesn't appear to be getting any power. Let me just plug it into the TV just to see if there's anything up on the screen. Right, so it says no signal, it appears to be completely dead. Just going to pop a cartridge in. Just going to give it a wiggle at the back while I turn it on. No, nothing. Right, so this is completely dead. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to make sure that there is power going into it. Now, I know that the uh, power strip here is working because, for example, I've got the TV plugged into it. So let me just swap it to another one just in case it was a faulty outlet there. No, still nothing at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just unplug this adapter here and then we're going to check it for power because... There's no power getting to this, it could be an internal thing, or it could be just that there's something wrong with this power supply here. So let's have a quick look at this, see what we should be getting. So if you look closely here, if we look at the output, 5 volts at 2 amps. So we're going to be looking for 5 volts. So put this to DC voltage. And with this one now, I'm going to be measuring the outer pin and the inner pin. So... You can see that the band there separates, the black plastic separates the two contacts. Right, it's not measuring anything, so this might be might be an easy fix. Or maybe something in there has blown this. No, there's nothing there at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, I've got plenty of power supplies with that around the house, so I'm gonna use one of them. Right, okay, so I've got my Android TV box here. That looks to be the same, the same connector. And this Android TV box is also 5 volts at 2 amps. If you have a look there, you can see 5 volts, 2,000 milliamps, which is the same as 2 amps. Remember, 1,000 milliamps is the same as 1 amp. So 2,000 milliamps is 2 amps. So let's just... Uh, Plug one of these in. And plug it into the back. Hey, there you go. Power. Let's see if it comes up on TV. Hyperkin. Wow, so it looks like it is just a faulty adapter. I'm gonna go through all the cartridges, just make sure that they're all working. And this on the side has uh, ports for the NES, the Genesis, which is the Mega Drive in the, the UK, and also the SNES as well. And that's player one there and player two here. So you can connect up two lots of controllers. Cartridge power fault detected. Please remove the cartridge from your system before pressing OK to continue. Right, OK. Right, well it says here no cart inserted. Right, here we go, recognise it, just a bad connection. 
Right, okay, before we go any further, I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to get a different power supply because I want to keep this one for my Android TV box. I'm going to see if I can get it working on just a USB powered one. Okay, so what I have here is a tablet charger and this will output 5 volts at 2 amps and I've just got a USB version of one of these. So uh, I'm going to plug that in and I'm going to use that instead because I need this one working on my Android TV box. Right, okay, let's uh, test each of them out now. Yeah, that's powering up fine now. It does feel much nicer with the Mega Drive controller. Yeah, it seems to work absolutely fine. So quite nice is that you can use the Mega Drive controller on it as well so it doesn't have to be the SNES controller it looks like you can use anything in here on any game well, it all appears to be working fine now because this is the uh, NES I'm gonna try those other three NES controllers to see if they're working on it Yeah, that all seems to be working fine. Right, I can't test up and down though, so let me just go back to home a minute. Yeah, and up and down's working as well. Right, let me try the other ones. Yeah, that's fine. Right, so that one's all working fine. Now let's try the last one. Yeah, so they're all working absolutely fine. So I don't know why they were down as faulty. They, uh, maybe just the people that bought them didn't like the feel of them, didn't think that the quality was very good, but they do actually work. Right, okay, so as you can see with that one, it does work. Let me just try that. I didn't try the Game Boy cartridge at the front, so let me just do that. Let me. Return to main menu here. Okay, so that's working as well. So as you can see, really straightforward. It was just a faulty adapter. Right, now let's test out this retro bit one here. All right, again, it all looks brand new. Right, let's turn this on and see what happens. Right, there's no lights on it to indicate that it is on. And it's saying no signal. Right, okay. So again, it looks like there's no power to this one. So first things first again, let's check the voltage on the adapter and also let's see what it should be outputting. Right, so this is outputting 8.5 volts at 1 amp per 1000 milliamps. So if this doesn't work, it's going to be a little bit more awkward for me. But remember, there was two of these in the pack, so it'd be quite unlikely to have the power supply go on both of them. But obviously that is possible. Right, so DC voltage on here. Let's see if we've got anything coming out of this. Yep, 
Yeah, we have, there we go. 8.6 volts. Just put that in there, like that. 8.6. Right, so it, there's definitely power going into the unit, but uh, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. So, to make this easier for myself now, I'm going to use the other one because why make life hard for myself? I know it would be hard if you only had one of these, but I've got two of them, so I'm going to start swapping things around and see if between both of them we can get one working one and then it will be able to uh, be easier for me to fault find. I mean, I don't even know if this is supposed to light up or not when it's turned on. Right, so let me get the other one out and then we can mix and match. Right, so let's take this one out. And then uh, let's have a look at this power supply. Right, okay, so this power supply here is actually different. So if you have a look at this one, this is... This is 5 volts at 1 amp, so let me just quickly try this one now, see if we have anything on here. Oh, here we go, we've got a light. So it is supposed to light up. Right, let me, uh, let me just plug this one in, see if we have anything. Yeah, here we have. Right, so... Let me go to a two-player game, see if the, both the ports are working. Okay, so as you can see, the two players working fine. The red one, and this is the white one. Right, so it does appear to be working, so let's have a look at this bottom one here to see what's going wrong with it. Right, it doesn't look like it's been taken apart before because we have the little security thing there and I can feel the hole underneath it for the screw. So that's a, that's a good sign because it means nobody else has tampered with it. Okay, so there's some at the front there. Here we go. Right, well I think we can see the problem straight away. If you have a look at that capacitor there. Can you see it's completely undone? So, I would say that that is probably the cause of it. and there's nothing really I'm going to be able to do with that. I'm not going to get involved in changing out the capacitor. If you were really interested, you would be able to read the readings off it and then you could order them up because they are going to be very cheap to buy. But uh, because this console is not a very expensive console, personally, I'm not going to go through the hassle of that. That's strange how that happened there. I'm just checking the on and off switch and that is working. So I'm just going to plug it in and just to uh, see if we have got voltage at the end of the jack here. Make sure it's not any bad connection there. But uh, I'm almost certain it's the, uh, the capacitor there. Yeah, 8.6 volts. Now that's interesting. I've uh, I've just swapped the lead over to the 5 volt lead. This was the one that came with the 8 volt lead, but I've swapped over to the 5 volt lead and have a look now. Can you see that the power lights come on there? So, even though that is like that, I think what I'm going to do is try it out with this lead here 
and if it works then I know that I can just use a separate 5 volt power supply that's uh, quite interesting so look can you see the lights on unplug it light goes off plug in this other one that actually came with it and can you see there's nothing there at all let me plug it in the other way nothing right okay so this one here is 5 volt at 1 amp so I would be able to use a similar setup to what I used on the uh, the Retron 5 early on in the video one of these yeah there we go the lights on right I'm going to put it back together and see if it's as simple as that just pop the rubber feet back on right okay so let's connect this one up using the little 5 volt tablet charger here See the little lights now coming on? Right, let's connect this one up HDMI. And let's try these two controllers here, the ones that haven't been even unpacked. Controllers do feel particularly cheap. Right, let's go to two player. Right, so you can see player one moving around there. And that's player two. So it is working as two player. Right, okay, let's go to a, a game. Yeah, do you know what? In this game, anyway, is more than playable. Obviously, I haven't tried any of the other ones. But, uh, yeah, I think you could have a bit of fun with that. Right, okay, so that's that one. Let's just quickly set this one up, make sure that this game's working on this one as well. So we're going to use that one there, turn it on. And I'm just going to swap the HDMI to this one here. Now there might be other faults that I don't know about. For example, there might be things wrong with the uh, AV leads, the composite leads. Or perhaps it overheats after a certain amount of time. But uh, initial testing appears to be okay. It's strange how that was 40 on 8 volts, but yet it works on 5 volts. Right, okay, so uh, as you can see, it appears to be working fine. Obviously, there could be further things wrong with it, but one of them is not working because it's not working with the 8 volt supply. So that makes sense, but it works with the 5 volt. But the other one does appear to be working fine, so that could be just a case that... Uh, Maybe it overheats after a certain amount of time, or maybe the person that got it just didn't like it, didn't like the way it handled, didn't like the quality of the controller, so they just sent it back. So, so far, we have actually got everything working by, you know, using a few simple things that you might already have around the house. Right, let's try the, the last few things now. So the two Atari inspired joysticks seem to be working fine. So I've just gone to Joy to Key here, and what that will do is it will let you, uh, when you wiggle the joystick around and press the buttons, it will come up on here what they actually do. So if you have a look at, for example, this one here, you can see that this is joystick one, so left, right, down, up, and then you can see the diagonals, and also the button. And then if we were to go to joystick two, you will now see the same.
left, right, down, up, and then diagonals. So again, it's only initial testing, but to me that seems to be working fine. So in this instance, there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with these joysticks here. The range feels fine on them, the movement and everything. This one's not as clicky as this one here. This one feels more worn in. But they both appear to be working okay. Okay, so this is the last thing we've got in the box. Let's see if we're gonna be as lucky with this one here. So everything so far has been fixed or was already working. So it's been really easy so far. So uh, it did say in the listen that there were seven consoles and five joysticks. Well, there is five joysticks, but there's definitely not seven consoles. There's only five. So we've got this, the BitBoy, two off the retro bit generations and also one Retron 5. So I think what they're doing, which is a bit sneaky, is they're counting the Retron 5 as being three consoles, the NES, SNES, and also the Mega Drive as well. What they forgot was that it also does the Game Boy, but uh, really it should have been listed as five joysticks and five consoles, but still, it's still a bargain for £63, so I'm happy with it. Right, let's open up this and see, see what's what. So this is a little handheld portable device that will play NES and also SNES games and also if you have the correct converter, your Mega Drive or Genesis games as well. Right, so we have this, this here, this is to convert your NES to SNES. We've got AV out, so there's an AV out port just here. Charger, looks like a little kickstand to rest it on. And also we have a two player adapter here. So the idea of this is, is that you would plug it into the side here, use your AV out to your TV, and then you could plug in your two SNES controllers, which is your Super Nintendo Entertainment System controllers, and then you would use that instead of an actual console itself. Right, okay, let's see what's, uh, let's see what's happening with this. Right, okay, we've got some lines across the screen there. Let's turn it off and put in a cartridge. does feel a little bit wobbly, but I believe these are a bit wobbly anyway. No. Oh, here we go. Got some lines across the screen, though. Okay, so it looks like the issue is with the lines. Let's just see if the controls work. Got a couple of shoulder buttons up here. That D-pad works. Sound works. I'm not sure where the volume is on this, so here we go. That works. It's not particularly loud. Contrast, yeah, that works. Right, okay, let's see now. Kick. Okay, well, they all do something. Yeah, all the buttons appear to be working. Pause. Right, let's try an NES game, see if that's working. So we're going to plug this into the top here. This is where it gets a bit ridiculous because you can see everything's just sticking out the top of it. It doesn't really want to go in very nice. Oh, there we go. To point it slightly backwards. Right, okay, you'll point this forwards. Yeah.
Right, well that appears to be working. So what we've got to look at is these lines going across the screen here. I'm just going to turn them on and off a few more times just to make sure, take them in and out just to make sure that the cartridges and everything are working properly. Yeah. This really looks much better on the uh, SNES cartridges because those just stick out too far. It's a shame as well that it couldn't be made so it could sit even lower into it. Right, nothing happened that time. Yeah, so it's working. Let's try a few more times. Yep. Right, okay, so I think I'm going to take it apart just to see if we can do anything with these lines across the screen, just in case a bit of the ribbon cable is damaged or something. Right, okay, but still, you know, it is playable, but it, it would be annoying to have those lines across the screen. So let's take it apart and see, see if it works. Oh, I've just noticed a slight bit worrying. If you look up here, you can see that the security tab's already been broken. So that says to me that obviously this has already been taken apart. Can you see there? Normally that would be a little sticker around there, but it's uh, it's been punched through. So this has definitely been apart before. So then you need to think to yourself, well, hold on a minute. You now need to know more than the original person that took this apart. So uh, chances are this one here is probably not going to be fixable but still we'll have a look obviously unless you really understand these and you know what you're doing but remember with everything here I haven't actually taken these apart before some of these things I've never even seen before I'm just using just normal fault finding techniques that you can use for absolutely anything Right, so I'm just going to undo these little screws. I want to get to the actual screen itself. Right, I'm just taking those bits out. I presume they're for... Uh... Oh, here we go. Look, look, look. That one looks a bit damaged there. I wonder if that could be it. Look in here really closely. Wait till it focuses in. There we go. Can you see that bit there? Looks like it's been like creased. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it on now and wiggle this around just to see if those lines disappear or not. Because I might not have to take it all apart if it's just that. Right, okay, so. this cable back on here no I don't think it's anything to do with that Right, turn it off. Just going to undo the connection here where it goes from the screen to the actual board itself. Slide that plastic out and just remove the cable. Well, it all looks absolutely perfect. Right, let's pop it back in and see if it makes a difference. No, the lines are still there. Let me pop a game back in. 
Now realistically this is probably going to be beyond me. I'm going to spend a bit more time looking at it off the camera but uh, obviously there's certain parts of the screen here that's not getting the signal so it's just blank so I don't really think there's going to be anything I can do with that but still I'll persevere for a bit now what I've done is I've just connected the AV cable and can you see up on the screen there it looks perfect and I've just connected the controller here and if you have a look you can see it moving around there so it's definitely an issue with the screen here it's not anything on here that's making it incorrect otherwise it would be incorrect up on the TV screen as well so the issue is to do with this little screen so I'm going to spend a little bit more time playing around with it okay so personally I can't find anything wrong with this so I'm just going to put it back together because I'd rather have it working with a couple of lines on the screen rather than it die on me completely because at least it can still be used as an actual NES and SNES console and Mega Drive if you were to buy the adapter. So I'm just going to pop this back together now. Okay, so it's all back together now and it's still working just like it was before. So we still have those annoying lines across the screen. Obviously, if you were to pay full price for it, then you wouldn't want that. And of course, you would send it back. But as it came in with everything else, I'm actually quite happy with that. And to me, that is still usable. Right, okay, just make sure it is still working when you plug it into the TV. Yeah, there we go. Right, I'm just going to make sure that the uh, NES is still working on it. There we go. Right, okay, let me line all these up now and finish up the video. So there you go, that is the end of this video here. Now just to recap exactly what's happened. The five controllers over there appear to be working fine without doing anything to them at all. So they just seem to work. This one here works, but not properly. It's got lines across the screen and I cannot fix that. But at the same time, it is playable, especially when you connect it up to the TV. And even on the screen there, you will still be able to use it. This one here just had a faulty power supply, so a very easy fix, just buy another power supply or just use a USB power supply and buy one of those DC leads. You can get those off eBay and Amazon for around two or three pounds, they're not expensive. This bit boy here just had a faulty micro USB port down the bottom, so now that is all working. And when it came to these two consoles here, one appears to be working just fine without doing anything to it. The other one was a real weird one. It didn't work with the eight volt power supply that came with it, but yet when I use a five volt power supply from here, it works. Or when I just use the same five volt power supply that I used to get this up and running, it works as well. So again, an easy fix. You've probably already got USB power supplies around the house from old Android phones and Apple phones. And then all you need to do again is buy a two or three pound Amazon or eBay lead. So you can see by doing simple fault finding, these were all sold as faulty, and really the only faulty thing is there. Now I paid £63, I quickly added up all the things together if I was to get them from Amazon today, and it's coming to over £280. But obviously that is brand new, and these are not brand new. But to me, they look brand new. They're in their boxes. I think that they've just been bought and just returned straight away when they're not working. And that's excluding the price for this. The price of this is roughly around £85, but obviously... This is the only one here that I haven't got working properly. Now, there might be other faults that I'm not aware of. For example, the console over there that appears to be working fine, maybe after using it for an hour, it might overheat. I really don't know. This is just initial testing. But I'm pleased that on most of them, I actually found a problem, such as a power supply here or the USB port on this one here. So I really think it is worthwhile just taking a bit of time out to learn a few fault finding skills and then attempt to fix something. Because for example, if you've got one of these and it's faulty, you'll probably end up just throwing it in the drawer and then a few years later, you'll throw it away. So if you take it apart and break it, who cares? Often by taking things apart, and breaking them, that's when you learn the most. You learn how things work and you learn how things come apart, ribbon cables, etc., stuff like that. So I would always encourage, for example, my children to take things apart and try to fix it themselves because the worst case scenario is that you're gonna break something and it's broken anyway. So in my opinion, you've got nothing to lose because realistically, you're not gonna send these things off to be repaired because whoever's gonna be repairing them, especially if you know from the UK or the USA, 
realistically, you're going to be paying up on £100 for the labour to fix any one of these. And that's more than most of these products are worth anyway. In fact, all of them, maybe apart from this one here. So it's absolutely pointless. So I really would encourage to try and fix things when things go wrong. And then you'll get a better understanding of how things work. And honestly, you will end up fixing so many things yourself, whether that would be anything in the house or the car, rather than constantly having to get people out to fix things, get your hands dirty and do it yourself. And then you do have quite a sense of achievement as well. So hopefully you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care. Bye now.